Hello everyone. My name is Greg Sayer. I live in Camarillo Springs. I'm a golfer. I'm actually the Senior Men's Club Golf uh, Tournament Director. And what I want to do is tell a story. About four years ago the golf course sold to a land developer and he had no interest in maintaining the golf course as a golf course. He wanted to uh, build houses. So the golf uh, members of the golf club got together so that we could keep the golf course. So that's the story uh, that we're going to try to tell. And a developer was uh, chosen to put forth a plan to the city to build residential houses. So the first time they met with the city council, the city council turned them down because they said that the uh, plan wasn't complete enough and that they didn't have enough information to go on we began to have meetings with local residents to determine what the local residents would require in order to support the idea of uh, allowing some of the golf course to be used for residential construction. We formed a Camarillo Spring Redevelopment Advisory Committee and the purpose of that committee was to uh, allow people in the community to voice their opinions and express their ideas on what we would like to see happen if there were to be a compromise between the developer and the local community and the golf course. And so this story is about that process. As the uh, city council gave New Urban West, who is the potential developer, a green light to go ahead and do environmental impact studies and to address many different issues that were uh, needing to be solved before there could be any construction. And so that process is quite involved and the, the timing is probably, uh, it's been about three years already, it's probably going to be another year or two. There have been a lot of questions about is the golf course going to close, uh, when are they going to build the houses, what are they going to do with the flooding situation, and they have what's called a hundred year floodplain that they have to solve for. So they hired a company called Pace Engineering to try to develop a solution to solve the flooding problem. They did solve the problem. They do have a plan in place. Part of the flood uh, mitigation involved moving dirt from one side of the golf course property over to the part of the property where houses would be constructed. That required a major uh, grading plan, uh, allowing for a redesigned golf course. Now, after the grading plan was completed, then a golf course architect by the name of Damien Pascuzzo was hired to design a golf course that could be completely redone and represent a brand new irrigation system a rerouting of the of the holes uh, converted from a 18-hole uh, format to a 12-hole format and include a new clubhouse and uh, restaurant. That is a whole nother topic which we will dedicate uh, another video to. We have reached a point where the city allowed uh, New Urban West to begin the process uh, with the, the impact on the environment, the impact on traffic, uh, wildlife. After those reports are, are, are done, we will have to decide on how to mitigate or solve any of the issues that came up within those reports. That whole process of environmental impact uh, study that will be dealt with in another video. Now, assuming that all of this can be done, and the city finally gives an approval for uh, home construction and golf course redevelopment. That begins a whole other process. And so there's a lot of questions about how all that will be done. And so we're going to deal with that in a different video that explains the process for building the golf course as a new golf course, building the homes as a new development. Ron Kester is the chairman of our uh, Redevelopment Advisory Committee, and he will be speaking about the committee itself, the purpose of the committee, and the functions of the committee. Kevin Harbison is the 
Vice President of Land Development for New Urban West. And he is going to be interviewed in order to explain the process that is involved when you ask for a general plan amendment in order to change the zoning to build homes and redevelop the golf course. And so he is the expert that will enlighten us and tell us about how it all works. The floodplain study was conducted by a company called Pace Engineering. And so we're going to do an interview with them and they will explain the engineering behind their solution to solve the flood problem. So all of that had to be done before you could move forward with any grading plan or environmental impact report. Without this solution to the flooding problem, you've got nothing. So that was the first problem that had to be solved. We're going to invite Pace to answer questions for us and explain how they uh, came up with their solution to solve the flooding problem here at Camarillo Springs. We called in a, a, an expert golf course architect. His name is Damien Pascuzo, and he's set out to redesign a golf course. We're going to have an interview with Damien. He will tell us how he came up with this new plan and why uh, he thinks it's a good plan and why he thinks it will be um, successful. We're going to bring in uh, a fellow who has developed golf courses around the country for many years, who understands the golf business, who understands the golf industry. His name is Gary Lewis. He's also a local guy, lives here in Camarillo. And in fact, he used to manage Camarillo Springs uh, in the early days. So he's going to talk about how the market is changing, uh, how golf courses are looking for new ways to re rethink and redesign and reconfigure. And so Gary's going to talk about why the market is prime for what we think is a great idea in developing a 12-hole golf course at Camarillo Springs. One of the main aspects of this entire project is we have 900 families in Camarillo Springs and the entire community is benefited by the golf course being its main uh, attraction. If you take the golf course away and let it close completely, the question becomes, what happens? How does that affect property values? How does that affect the property that is left vacant? Is it fenced? How does the fencing affect wildlife? How will it be maintained as a uh, abandoned golf course, as it were? We're going to have some more experts talk about how golf course property values change based on the condition of the golf course. It's, it's really in all of our benefit to uh, understand what may happen if we allow the golf course to close and what could happen if we create a solution where we have a golf course that, that is healthy and uh, viable. The story needs to be told. Should we, should we let the golf course close completely and go fallow and become an abandoned property? Or should we work with New Urban West and allow them to uh, do their business of building 248 senior residential units and also uh, partnering with us to rebuild and redesign a brand new golf course and clubhouse so that we can have the lifestyle that we're bought into when we moved here in the first place and still allow a new community to develop and flourish uh, for years to come.